What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko back with Tony. Hello. And uh, Tony, we haven't seen you on the channel in a while, but Cyberdark uh, Structure Deck just came out yeah. and uh, you made a pretty spicy build here. I, I tried to. Uh, so for context for anyone who's ever heard of Cyberdark, this archetype came out in 2006. Yep. And as a result of that, uh, a lot of the cards weren't very good. And that's part of the reason why I love these structure decks, like the Sacred Beast structure deck, because of how abysmally bad these concepts in GX were, the cards that come out every time they make support for it have to be so overpowered that it feels good to be playing with all these overpowered cards, despite how bad the archetype is. And then it just kind of balances it out, and then everything is okay. Somewhat. All right. uh, well, as I get to the deck profile, I'll quickly explain that uh, it's not what you think it is going to be. Okay, yeah, one last thing just before we get into the profile, Tony. The other day I got comments on people being like, oh, Tony only does 14 cards in, extra, in his extra deck. If you guys haven't been watching Tony for a while, Tony's like thing is to only have 14 because if you need 15, then you're just probably not working with it. All right, so you, you Tony always does 14 cards in his extra deck. 15th is up to you. Okay, Tony, let's yeah, get the it. 14, the 15 cards is up to you, but it's only on this channel. On my channel, I actually do go for 15. Yeah, he goes a lot more. I that. know how to count on my channel at least. All right, let's get into anyway, it. Anyway, uh, getting into the profile, we start with the original Cyberdark Monsters. We have three. Cyber Dark Edge, one Cyber Dark Horn, and one Cyber Dark Keel. All right, so how do, what do these monsters do? They all have a common effect where if they're normal summon, they can target one level three or lower dragon in your graveyard, equip it to this card. It gains the attack of the equipped monster, and should these cards be destroyed by battle, it could send that monster equipped by its effect to the graveyard. They also have a secondary effect when they battle. Uh, Keel, or Edge, aptly named Edge, uh, allows you to attack directly, but in doing so, halves its attack. Keel, if it runs over a monster, inflicts a whopping 300 damage to your opponent. And Horn inflicts piercing. Now, let's be clear. These effects were made in 2006, but even in 2006, these effects were terrible. Yeah. And while the logic behind this deck is that you can normal summon these guys, equip a drag, a level 3 dragon, probably going to do about 24 to 2500 attack, the issue with these cards is one, they're normal summon reliant, and two, they only equip once. Once that equip goes away, these cards are vanillas in every other sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and that makes these cards pretty bad on their own however in the logic of playing a very slow deck they make okay beaters the reason we're playing three edge and only two of these is because these are here for names uh for a card that we'll explain later this one's actually pretty decent uh, a number of your other cyber dark cards that will be coming up do require you to go into damage calculation uh which means that sometimes you may have to run into a monster that's bigger than you with these guys this one because it can attack directly can go into damage calculation just attack them directly and trigger the effects of some of those cards without also having to give up the monster equipped to it and then turning this card dead. So this is why Edge is preferably the best one if you want to actually play a Cyber Dark strategy. Okay. Uh, going into the second wave of support released in Legendary Duelist, we have three Cyber Dark Cannon and three Cyber Dark Claw. So these cards were released uh, pretty much to fix one of the first issues with Cyberdark's consistency. Both these cards can discard themselves to add one Cyberdark card of a kind from your deck to hand. This one can discard itself to search for a Cyberdark machine monster, so unfortunately you can't search the dragons. Uh, and this one can discard itself to search for a Cyberdark spell or trap card, of which we'll explore later. Uh, the cool part about these, however, is that both these monsters are level 3 dragons, which means they also, upon discarding themselves, make perfect targets to be equipped by your original monsters. Uh, and because they're 1600 attack, they put all your cyber dogs into 2400 attack range. This actually works well because then they have their last effects. At the start of damage calculation uh, of when you're, uh, all these guys are equipped, they can also send a card from either the deck or the extra deck to the graveyard. Which means that for this one, you can send, it's basically a foolish barrier for any monster. And this one lets you literally go Nadir Servant on your opponent's attack. Uh, or when you attack, or when you get attacked. So that's really cool. And finally, the other aspect of these cards is that when they're sent to the graveyard while equipped to a monster, and this is a very key, while equipped to a monster, if the monster dies and this uh, goes with it, it doesn't get this effect. But if they're sent, for, let's say, for the cyber dark effects to protect themselves, they will trigger. When they're sent while equipped to a monster, Cannon will have you draw a card, and Claw will allow you to add any cyber dark monster from your graveyard to your hand. Conveniently, that also includes itself. And that leads to some very interesting loop looped combos. Regardless, most of these cards are just there for you to get into your basic Cyber Dark monsters or your support and then play a basic beatdown game with them. Okay. Going on from there, we have the new Cyber Dark monster, which is the one Cyber Dark Chimera. Funny enough, if you actually know the original Cyber Darks, this is a reversed, flipped over Cyber Dark Dragon. I never even noticed that. Yeah, it's just, it's just Cyber Dragon 
flipped over its head. <laughs> okay. Its tail is its face now. <laughs> uh, this card does none of the cyber dark. Uh, does nothing the other cyber darks do. Uh, two effects. First off, it lets you discard any spell or trap to search for power bond from your deck to the hand. Uh, which is weird because realistically, this power bond is something you would see in cyber dragons. But what makes this relevant in this deck is that on the turn that you use this effect, it lets you miracle fusion when you fusion summon. Which means your power bond now allows you to fusion summon from your graveyard. Fantastic. Uh, and this allows you to summon some of your cyber dark fusions, and they become a little bigger given how abysmal their attack usually is. More importantly, though, is that when this card is sent to the graveyard, it lets you send a cyber dark monster from your deck to the hand that isn't an, of a name that is already in your graveyard. This is a great way for you to fill up your graveyard with cyber dark monsters for summoning something like either the cyber dark dragon or the cyber darkness dragon, which have very specific or large requirements that you need to fill up your graveyard for. Uh, conveniently enough, because this thing is 800 attack, you can normal summon this and then link it this way into an Amrage, which does trigger its effect. Likewise, it can be sent off of a cannon, which triggers its effect. Also, you can send it off of something like a card we'll explore later. But there's a number of ways to trigger this effect, and it's really easy for you to load up for a fusion summon using this card alone. Okay. Uh, the reason we only play one is because, realistically, there's not a lot of spell and traps we want to discard. This fusion effect does not come up as much as you think it does, but when it does come up, it's pretty busted. Okay. The other two cards we're playing is two Armored Cyber, and these, once again, are level three dragons, which, once again, can be equipped by your original Cyber Dark monsters. Uh, one equipped to a monster, that monster gains 600 attack. Pretty decent. Additionally, these, this card alone can also naturally equip itself from the hand or field to one of your monsters, which means randomly it could become a free equip that gives a 600 attack. Can the Cyber Darks equip more than one card at a time? No. And this is where the other aspect uh, comes in with go. this card, though. See, the interesting part about the Cyber Darks is that they can only send the monster they equip through their own effect to protect themselves. And that's really unfortunate because when you equip this, you can't use that to protect it if it's equipped by its own effect. Uh, uh, the okay. reason why you do it is just because sometimes you need the extra attack. And conveniently enough, if you do equip this with one of your cyber darks, because of the 1600 it gains off its own attack and then the 600, it makes this a 3k beater, which is the largest these guys can get naturally. Okay. Furthermore, and I like this the most, if this card is sent while equipped, it can special summon a cyber monster from your graveyard. This can bring back your cyber dark monsters. I wouldn't recommend it. It also conveniently can bring back your fusions as well. Ooh. Which can sometimes be super relevant because none of your fusions actually have no me with restrictions, at least relative to cyber darks. Yep. Going into the last monster we're playing, we're playing one Golden Lord. Yeah, so this is where I saw this deck profile before we did before we were doing this video. This is where it gets spicy. Okay, so here's the re logic behind Golden Lord. Uh, remember how I said that cannon can dump any monster from your graveyard, right? Yep. Suppose you have a uh, Cyber Dark Edge equipped with a cannon. Let's say you attack directly. You send the Golden Lord from your deck to the graveyard. After that, you can then activate Golden Lord's effect, sending the equipped monster to the graveyard to add this back in special summoning, putting a 3500 beat on the field. However, this also triggers the cannon in the graveyard, or the claw, depending on which one, that then gets its effect to either draw or recycle the card. Yep. And because of the support we have in this deck, you can then do things like bounce this back and normal summon again to basically net you advantage, but still put a 3500 beater. In most cases, this is a way for you to trigger things like this. You can just even add it back to your hand and launch it by sending one of your spell and traps that are dead. Yep. And there's a lot of cool things with it, but it does provide you a decent way to get these effects off, which are very important in the grind game. Okay. Also, it's a different type, and that's going to be relevant when we you see the floodgates. And yes, we are playing floodgates. Yeah, so this is a very control-based cyber dark. This deck. is a very slow deck. Yeah. All right, moving on from there, we have three cyber dark realm. Uh, yeah. Cyber dark realm is one of the new support cards that come out from this structure deck. Uh, there's a few effects. First off, when this card is activated, it adds for any cyber dark monster. Because it is a cyber dark spell, it can search. It can be searched off of your claw. And because this then can search for your cannon, essentially claw equals any cyber dark monster. Likewise, acting with this card, you can then grab a claw, which then can grab you another spell as well. So a lot of cool searches. These three cards combined give you nine ways into a setup. Yep. And that's pretty great. Uh, the other effect uh, that happens is that your cyber dark monsters, when they activate their normal summon effects, can equip from your opponent's graveyard as well. Uh, I don't know how relevant that effect is in the long span of things, but conveniently enough, it can equip because some of your cyber dark monsters in the, at least the extra ones can equip machines. They can equip Drytron monsters. That's pretty good. Uh, take that as you will. Or against Dragon Link or against Dragon Maids, they can equip the dragons. Take that as you will. The more interesting effect that you may or may not use is that once per turn, you can commit an extra normal summon of a cyber dark monster. 
Uh, this solves one of the bigger issues with the deck in that they're incredibly normal summoner line. If you break with two of these, only one of these are going off per turn until you have this card online, which then lets you put two of them on the field. That's yep. two average 24 to 3,000 K beaters that you can probably punch face in for at least a bit of extra swarming. And that does lead, let you do some extension with this card. But most cases, this is just one of your consistency options. The next spell we play is three Cyber Dark Hor or Cybernetic Horizon, but it does treat itself as a Cyber Dark card. So yes, it also can be searched off of your claw. Uh, Cybernetic Horizon, when activated as part of the resolution of its effect, lets you send one Cyber, uh, two Cyber monsters from your hand or deck and deck of two different types, uh, the attributes, uh, and they could be machine or dragon. And this is the reason particularly that we are playing the Armored Cyber. See, Armored Cyber is a light cyber monster that's a dragon, which means when you activate this card, you're free to send any cyber dark monster from your hand and then send one of these from the deck to the graveyard. And then upon doing so, this card then lets you add one cyber monster from your deck to your hand. And furthermore, after resolving that effect, it then sends one cyber machine fusion monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. And this is relevant for some weird uh, overload fusion combos. But then that's the main reason why we play this card. The idea is that you need this card in the deck to be able to resolve this effect. But because this card can be sent from hand or uh, deck, it means that if you draw into this card, you could also send this card to send a cyber dark monster from your deck to the graveyard, particularly your chimera. And there's a lot of cool combos where this card alone allows you to load up your graveyard with conveniently exactly five cyber dark monsters for that power bottom play to then go into your cyber darkness dragon at around 5,000 attack. But in most cases, once again, this is another consistency card. The only limitation with this card is that it does lock into machines from the extra deck after you activate it. So unfortunately, it means that you can't super extend with this card. But in most cases, you're only making machines anyway. I was gonna say it would be really cool if they gave the deck some kind of dragon fusion. Oh, I wish. Yeah, I, I think like really good. it's. It, I, I they have overload fusion as the best we're gonna get. Unfortunately, searching is weird right now. Yep. Uh, then we're playing two Cyber Dark Inferno. This is one of the cards that came out in Legendary Duelist. It also comes out in the structure deck, so don't have to go look for that one. Uh, Cyber Dark Inferno has a few effects as well. First off, all your Cyber Dark monsters, while equipped with an equipped card, cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects. This basically turns them into pseudo cosmo to talk destroyers uh the unfortunate part is that it only applies that equip effect while it's equipped which means that if somehow these guys uh protect themselves with the, their own effects they no longer get the protection from this as well and this also means that when they're normal summoned because they're not equipped at the moment your opponent can still target them at that moment for usually for the negation Conveniently though, the other effect of this card is that it lets you target one of your Cyber Dark monsters, bounce it back to your hand, and then normal summon a Cyber Dark monster from your hand. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a, and that lets you technically swap out Cyber Dark monsters, but more importantly, it lets you turn a Cyber Dark monster that no longer has equipped to bounce back to your hand and then re-normal summon it to equip a monster again. And this lets you basically recycle the equips effects over and over again, combined with a Golden Lord to do some really funky advantage combos. You can normal summon this, uh, equip this claw, send the claw to the graveyard, summon the Golden Lord, activate the field spell, bounce this card back, and almost summon again, equip the claw all over again, and you essentially net one an advantage for free. Yep. But mostly at the end of the day, I think the more important part of this effect will still be that protection effect. Yep. Because the Cyber Dark monsters only protect themselves by battle, not even by card effect, this card essentially covers up the last weird chinks in their armor to allow you to play. And furthermore, if they do attempt to remove, your opponent does attempt to remove this card in any way, it searches for a fusion spell from your deck to your hand. Oh. Yeah. It gives you your weight in the, your overload fusion. So... At least, worst comes to worst, when you're pulling out this card, it does pay you back a bit. Yep. Uh, then we have the one power bomb that can be searched off the Chimera, and the one overload fusion that can be searched off of our uh, Inferno. Both used to make our Cyber Dark fusions. Going into the expensive stuff, and I say expensive stuff because it's unfortunately expensive stuff, we have the three Pot of Prosperity, the two Pot of Duality. Uh, you really do need to see one of your extenders. If you don't see a Claw or Horn sometimes at the start, uh, or Claw Cannon at the start of your game, Sometimes your hands just suck. Yep. Furthermore, sometimes you do need to set up with floodgates. And these cards let you dig a little harder. Uh, this card lets you stay six deep. This card lets you stay three deep. And you're rarely not, you're rarely ever going to be mandatorily have to special summon. Even Golden Lord doesn't have to special summon, which makes these cards really good for setting up early game yep. and getting into the cards you need. If you guys need a budget alternative, I'll just say this. You can just play three duality. Yeah. Instead of instead of you play three duality, two extravagance. Yeah, you can play extravagance because it's a little bit cheaper. You can even play desires. I mean, play, desires not as good. But you, you play can. allure honestly at that point too. Oh, true. They're all they're, they're all, all dark. dark. Yeah. Yeah, you can play allure. So there's different options. Yeah. Then the card that I think everyone dreads having to see three forbidden droplets. Yeah. So uh, forbidden droplets, I I tried my best not to put this card in, but there's actually some really cool interactions. It's because it can send the equip cards, right? Yes. Yeah, so there here's the go. cool thing about this. Yeah. 
Forbidden Droplets prevents your opponent from spawning based off the original type of the card it sends. Yeah. Which means when it does send the equipped monsters, it counts themselves as monsters instead of spells yep. for preventing your opponent to activate. Likewise, because of the fact that your Cyber Dark Cannon and Claw does get their effects while they're sent when equipped, they also trigger when you send them that way. Yep. Furthermore, I did have to check this ruling with one of the judges. Did you know that if you do send both the monster and the equipped card at the same time, this still triggers because at the moment of it being sent, it still considers itself equipped. Oh. Which means you actually can launch both cards at the same time because let's face it, once you launch this, this is pretty That's, much useless. Yeah, you can launch both these at the same time to negate two and still get the effects of these guys, which is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, likewise, because this card houses the attack, it does mean that these guys can go in for actual hit damage into your opponent's monsters. And it does shut off your opponent's board because let's face it, this deck doesn't exactly have the great greatest going second advantage sometimes yes yeah, so droplet but if you can't afford it just play veilers or something play veilers play hand traps you may notice i'm not playing hand traps in this deck yeah uh realistically it's because i just ran out of space but you can play hand traps to likewise there you go oh uh, we are playing three imperm though that shouldn't be that hard you do get them in the structure deck yep. uh i shouldn't have to explain imperm just basic effect negation uh then we move on to the depressing part the floodgates uh we have three summon limit and two there can only be one yep so this might seem a little weird because logically you play a lot of machines, so it would lock you into summoning only one machine. But let's face it, we have five cyber dark monsters that were ever normal summon, and in most cases we'll only be bouncing back that one monster with our inferno over and over again. So in most cases you only have one machine. The only other ultra type in the deck is a Dombi, which means this card actually works really well. If in the odd situation you do need to turn this off though, this is where the Golden Lord also comes in. You can launch these off of your Golden Lord to turn them off so that you can then do plays that way. Yep. Some of them, on the other hand, is because this deck is glacially slow. Yeah. Like you can't, I can't deny the fact that despite all this consistency, the deck still boils down to normal summon a monster and then hope to God your opponent has, doesn't have enough combo that they can work through your board. Yep. So this card effectively turns your opponent down having two summons per turn, which is really great because then when your Cyber Darks go in for damage and start killing monsters, they net, net your opponent back to zero monsters, usually with something like an Entis sent from the edge deck, to basically force your opponent to never be able to generate advantage to break your board. Yep. And this is pretty much why you're playing this card. These cards slow your opponent down and let you continue to just beat down for a slow grind game. Yep. The last card we're playing though is the one uh, Sheryl Schism. Because Claw can send from the Exec, it can send an App Cologne. And then because all your monsters are dark, it means that the App Cologne, upon adding the Schism, can then use Schism to then banish the App Cologne, banish any of your Cyber Darks to summon a window on your opponent's turn. And once again, because Winda is a spellcaster, they work both well under these cards. Yeah. And that just gives you another form of Floodgate. Oh, it's really just Floodgate dot. It is deck. Floodgate deck. So, uh, I'll get into the extra deck, and then I'll explain my thoughts on this deck, though. Okay. Anyway, going into the extra deck, then, we have the one Cyber Dark Dragon and the one Cyber Darkness Dragon. Yep. So, the Cyber Dark Dragon, uh, just to give you a recap, since this card was is old as hell, has a thousand attack when normal summon equips any, or when special summon from, or fusion summon, equips any dragon monster from your graveyard. Well, these guys only equip level threes, this guy could equip any dragon, which can be really useful because given the fact that we can send monsters from our extra deck, we can send some pretty big dragons at times to also equip off of that. Uh, but realistically, you're never gonna be summoning this card. The reason why it's in here is because it's a cyber dark name that we can dump off of something like our horizon to put another name into the graveyard for the cyber darkness dragon. Yep. Cyber darkness dragon requires five cyber dark effect monsters. Cause I guess one day there'll be cyber dark normal monsters. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but it has a few effects. When uh, special summoned, not only when fusion, when special summoned, it equips any machine or dragon monster from your graveyard, gaining the attack. Uh, this means that, yes, it can equip things like your other Cyber Dark monsters to gain really big attack. More importantly, though, it's an Omni Negate that isn't once per turn, as long as you can send an equipped spell to the graveyard. Yep. Uh, and what that means is that after you load your graveyard up with this, there's a few ways to get a number of equip spells onto this guy, especially if it's power bonded to be 4,000, to be able to launch multiple equip spells on your opponent to negate everything your opponent has. Yep. And that's generally the idea. You use cards in this deck like Horizon to load up your graveyard, you then go power bond with the Miracle Fusion effect, or just overload fusion, summon this thing, and then load it up with a few equips off of it, or any other monster equipped with a monster. Mind you, this sends any equip card, it doesn't have to be equipped to it and then it just negates your opponent's field. Yep. Uh, likewise, because this card uh, equips any machine monster, it does allow us to make one of our other boss monsters, which is, in this case, our Cyber Dark End Dragon, the one that comes out from the set. So Cyber Dark End Dragon can be summoned two ways. You could either summon it by fusing a Cyber Dark Dragon and a Cyber End Dragon to make it, or you can tribute a uh, Dark Machine Monster equipped with a Cyber End Dragon. Uh, so in this case, it would be this, when you summon this, you can equip a Cyber End Dragon from your extra deck, and that feeds the requirements to summon this guy. 
This guy is a juggernaut. It cannot be, it's unaffected by your opponent's activated card effects. So your opponent literally has to find a continuous to out this card because it's 5,000 attack. Yep. Furthermore, because it's only unaffected by your opponent's activated effects, it still gains the boost from anything that you would equip it with. If you equip an armored cybered onto this, it goes to 56. More importantly also is that on once per turn on your turn, you could equip a monster from either graveyard to this card. And this card gains attacks or its maximum attack potential and the number of attacks you can do is equal to the number of cards equipped to it. So if you have one equipped or zero equipped, it has one attack. If you have two equipped, that's a 5,000 monster going in for two attacks. Or in the weird scenario where you both manage to send both of these cards to the graveyard and you power bond to this, that's a 10,000 monster coming in for multiple attacks and that's pretty crazy. Wow. Especially since it's unaffected by card effects. But that's the realistic idea with this deck is that at some point you'll summon this card and maybe you'll negate with it. But when you eventually can negate with it, maybe you'll just have this equipped and then you'll send both to summon this to end the game. Yep. Then going into the other stuff, we have the one Cyber End Dragon to be equipped off this. This is the misprint one, if you may notice, because it actually has the imprint of Cyber Dark, uh, Cyber Dark End Dragon on it. Yep. Really cool. We have the one Chimera Flesia, which you send off of Claw. Actually, most of this extract will be things you send off of Claw. Uh, we have the one Chimera Flesia, which you send off Claw, which has the graveyard effect where if it's sent to the graveyard, on the next standby phase, you search for a fusion spell, which searches Overload Fusion to set up your place. Yep. You have two Entis because if it was good in, if it was good in Dogmatica, it's good in this. Uh, you then have the one app clone and the two window, just so that you can have the schism package. Then you have the one Verti Anaconda. You actually be making this shockingly enough because at some point you will be able to convert a Golden Lord and one of your Cyber Dark monsters into this because you conveniently, upon sending those, have five engraved and then use this to send an Overload Fusion to make your Cyber Darkness Dragon. That's pretty good. Yeah, and then from there you might just end the game. Uh, you have the one Fair G. You will send this off your claw. This is just for a free cycle. Sometimes you just need this because your hand just. It reeks. Yep. Uh, we have the one barricade board blocker. This card can be used to grab back your Cyber Dark Inferno, but it also uses it as a way to pitch things that you don't want in your hand, like, for example, your Chimera or your Golden Lord. Yep. And the one Almirage because you can link away something like a, cyber, a Chimera into this. Yep. And that makes the deck. So how does the deck play, though? Uh, the deck plays slow. Like... I'm I, assuming there's no real combos, but it's just kind of like... There is no real combos. I can show you a test hand to show you how this deck would play. Sure. Yeah, so yeah, I'll do that. And then I'll, I guess, you, you'll, you'll get to see exactly what I mean when I say this deck is slow. Okay. Okay, so we're back. Yep, so deck test shuffled. hand. Yep, test hand going in. We yep. have our five cards being one Cyber Dark Edge, one Pot of Duality, one Cyber Dark Cannon, one Cyber Dark Inferno, and one Pot of Prosperity. Uh, thank God we opened these because this hand otherwise would have been really, really basic. Okay. Uh, anyway, we're going to start, in this case, we're going to start by activating the duality first. Why? Because our pot of prosperity changes depending on what our duality is, actually. Okay. I'm going to VO3. And, yeah, we're just going to grab the floodgate in this case. For sure. So now, we have at least the floodgate alive. Next, as we keep digging, we're then going to activate the prosperity. We're going to banish, let's say, the barricade board blocker, the fair jeet. Uh, one of the w uh, windows, uh, let's say, I don't know, one of the Entis, this thing, and realistically, you know what, let's send this Almirage, because we may not, uh, given where I think we're going to go, we may not need it. Okay. Number of six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is what I was looking for. Yeah, I was about to say, is Horizon what you go for? Horizon is why we go for it. Why do we do this is because we're then going to activate our cannon effect. Yep. We're going to use cannon, discard it, and we're going to use it to grab our Chimera. Yep. We're then going to activate the Horizon. On resolution, we're going to send the Chimera from our hand to the graveyard. We're going to send the Cybers Armored Cyber from our deck to the graveyard. And then we're going to add the Cyber Dark Claw. Yep. Then... On resolution, we're then going to send from our extra deck a Cyber Dark Dragon. Okay. Then the Chimera in our graveyard will then trigger as well. We're then going to send another Cyber Dark monster that doesn't share a name with a monster in our graveyard, which is a lot of things, but let's say we're in this case we're going to send Keel because this is by far the worst one. From there, we're then going to activate the Claw and use Claw's effect. We're going to grab a spell, a spell in our world. I'm going to activate the realm and use realm's effect to then grab, let's say, another cyber dark monster. Yep. Because we have this, technically we don't even need this, but we're going to keep this in hand for uh, recursion later. 
For us, we're going to then activate the field spell and then normal summon out our Cyber Dark Edge. We're going to use Cyber Dark Edge's effect to then equip our Cyber Dark Claw to this monster. Even if they go hand trap here and they go fail or imperm, that's fine because then we can just activate this, bounce it back, and normal summon it again. Yep. So at this point, we're floating. We're then going to set this card, and that is all she wrote. That's your turn. Yeah, that is all she wrote. When your opponent's turn, you're going to flip this? When your opponent's turn, we're going to flip this. That probably will stop a majority of the aggression, and that means your opponent may have to just beat face. Yeah. If beat face, this card can trigger. You have a few options here. You could obviously just send the Antis to pop a card, but in the interest of having to maybe set up a future play, you could always just send the App Cologne at that point as well. So it's a schism. Yes. Okay. Let's say in this case, we go for the schism play. Yep. And suppose that you beat this monster over, we can then send this card to the Grave of the Protector, of which Claw will then trigger, allowing us to then grab back our cannon. Yep. And maybe this dies. Honestly, that's fine. Given our hand, we still have a few plays we can do. From there, we'll draw a turn. Wow, we just keep having plays. Once again, we're going to normal summon this horn. Yep. We're going to use horn's effect, but in this case, oop, nope, we have to actually use a cannon first. I just realized cannon's in my hand. Oh, okay, yeah, so use a cannon. Use cannon. Yeah, another edge. Then you uh, normal summon horn. Yep, yeah, then we'll equip the cannon. We'll yep. attack into a monster, use the effect of which we'll send the golden mode to the graveyard. Yep. Uh, and then this is where you start your. This is where I start a bit more, getting yeah. more aggressive. We're then going to send this card to the graveyard, add this back to our hand, special summon it. Uh, from there, we can then link these two away. Well, yeah, I was going to say, depending on what your opponent has, you just go Verte into Overload Fusion here, right? Correct. So you're going to make the Verte here. You're then going to discard this claw because. Let's face it, if we're going to grab something, we might as well grab, use Claw to grab another Realm. Activate the Realm. Loop Claw. Yep. Just get more cards in your graveyard. Yeah. We're then going to activate the effects of our Verte Anaconda. We're going to send the Overload Fusion from our deck to the graveyard. We are going to go, let's say, one of these Claws because we have a Claw. One of this Horn because we don't need the Horn. Uh, one of the Edges because screw Edge. Uh, one of the keel, and then let's say, eh, let's send get rid of the chimera as well, and we're going to summon out the cyber dark cyber dark strike. Cyber dark dragon will then trigger, allowing us to equip any machine or uh, dragon monster from our graveyard, of which I think in this case we will equip. Don't you just go cyber end cannon? Oh, interesting. Uh, because it's main phase two, it's kind of moot to do that at this point. But what it's used is, because we have our realms on the field, we can then activate realms effect to then normal summon out the edge. And then edge will trigger to equip a claw as well. Okay. That gives us two negates. But we are not done there. We'll then set this card and then pass turn to our opponent. And then on the opponent's turn, you make window. Yeah, on our opponent's turn, we can wind our opponent. Funny enough, here's a few things we can work with after we get to this point, though. One, this has two negates. Yeah. But while it has two negates, it also can't be targeted by or destroyed by card effects because this is on the field. Uh, likewise, however, it would have the wind on board. And realistically, at the end of the day, on our following turn, even if they somehow clear this field, we still have the Golden Lord that can send the, this as well yeah. to summon things back. But whenever we negate with this card, these also trigger to net us advantage. This will draw us, this will add back a card, and then we just get another normal summon for next turn and so then just continuously grind out. The deck's slow, but it builds a lot of advantage. The deck's slow, it builds advantage consistently well. Yeah. However, I'm going to repeat this again when I say it's slow. It is glacially slow. Like... After playing this deck with the support that I guess makes it playable, I can almost understand why Zayn in the anime liked playing with like electrodes. Because I feel the only way to get adrenaline off of off playing of this deck this? is literally tasing your balls. Damn. Because that's a lot of times that's what this deck can be. Well, the deck does have a lot of explosive kill potential. If in this situation I didn't send the Cyber Dark uh, Dragon because I didn't know if I would have five or not, I could theoretically have equipped the Cyber and can converted these two into the Cyber Dark the End Dragon. Yeah. And that would have also put a lot of damage potential on the field. Yeah. But in most cases, because of the way that this deck sometimes plays, you do have to play a very slow game because the Cyber Dark monsters just don't really do anything in this modern meta. They don't interact with your opponent. Yeah. And because of that, you're going to have to play a game that conveniently just tries to at least outgrind your opponent or slow your opponent down to a 2006 speed. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you, Tony, for the deck profile. Thank you for this mini, I mean, not combo, but I guess test hand. Playing it out, showing people how to play the deck. Yeah, uh, I will say this deck looks beautiful. I can't lie. One of the things I loved about GX was just the aesthetic. Yeah, boxes. yeah, the, the artwork on GX. They were amazing. so cool, just like this dark metal kind of look to them. Yeah, it's well, and was a shame that they, they didn't do well. If you are an enthusiast of that era, this is definitely a deck I would. Recommend. One of my favorite. One of my favorite for sure. But thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. But that's Spanko and Tony. Signing out. Peace.